We need help to cover this market, and we've got it. David Barnson is here. This virus spreading yeah. outside China, the word pandemic is being used, and that's affecting the market again. We don't know how bad it's going to get from a health standpoint. The market is up 4.5% since the bottom level of coronavirus three weeks ago. think that this is a coronavirus panic much more than a Bernie Sanders story. Your thoughts on the fear trade, how long it lasts? Um, if I know the answer to that, I would be sharing it with you privately. <laughs> so I do want to say no one else knows either, Charles. That's the important part. We do uh, a lot of work to make sure that our clients stay calm and understand our perspective. Behavioral finance drives investor results. We've never seen a situation where the outcomes in the short term, by short term, I mean three to six months, are so diverse. We could be into a recession and we literally could bounce back 30, 40 percent. This was something that came so quickly and so violently. But I felt that we were very prepared in this sense. We're religious asset allocators. So you can look and say market's down 25%, but look at a portfolio and say down 8, 9, 10%. I don't want to be down 10%. And I don't want our equities down 20s. But that asset allocation story really worked. Well, I apologize in advance, but I'm just not going to answer the question about whether or not we've seen a bottom. Uh, there's one honest answer for you, Stuart, and one honest answer for our viewers, and that is nobody knows. This really is about excessive government spending. Eventually, the next tool to your question that the Fed's going to pull out is some better form of monetization, the Japanification of our economy, because we have too much government debt and its spending is not getting yeah. under control and it's not going to get under control. You, you, you wrote this in response to the fact that a lot of big corporations have already announced they're kicking the can down the road for bringing employees back. You lay out the cascading effect. Yes, you got to protect small business, but when big businesses wait, bad things happen. The part that's being ignored is the impact to all those downstream throughout the city, the dry cleaners, the coffee shops, the restaurants. There's a total ecosystem that's being ignored. Now, I know and you know, Pete, that the mayor isn't going to do anything about that. The leadership has to come from these very capable mm -hmm. and resourceful business leaders. Well, Charles, in fairness to my view here, the market is up eight of the last nine days. And those are the eight days where it's been very clear they weren't getting a stimulus deal done. I mean, you're up 2000 points since they first hit a stalemate from COVID in the health side to the market's way of dealing with this. You have a lot of indicators where society is saying we're ready to move on. You people leave us alone. What's your take on where we are in this recovery? The thing that we keep telling clients, Maria, is that it isn't so much about where the COVID news goes. It's where the policy response ends up being. That's the hard to predict element. If you care about the economic prospects of those who are more disenfranchised, more disadvantaged, you yes. cannot support the idea of staying shut down. We need to get back to work open schools, open businesses, and let this virus run its course. That does not mean not protecting the vulnerable. What you don't see is the record number of new business license applications taken out for all these failed businesses that are basically being forced into failure, of course, by the, the tragedy of the pandemic and the policy decisions. But yet there are new businesses that are starting to take their place. This entrepreneurial spirit that is embedded in the DNA of Americans has not gone anywhere. And I think it will end up being the major story of 2021.